Boop. Beep boop. Whew. What's up everyone and welcome to my new FAQ video. It's Sunday, finally. And uh, yes, it's not really Sunday for me, it's more like Wednesday. But let's pretend it's Sunday. And again, I want to say thank you for all the awesome questions in my latest video. You know, I got about 2,000 questions or 2,000 comments at least in the latest video, which is insane. Thank you so much, guys. And I've also seen a lot of questions that <laughs> have already been asked before. So I think that means that I have a lot of new viewers on the line, which is awesome. I love that. So thank you so much. First question. Iowa, you say that you don't want to speak about religion, so how do you explain that you look like Jesus? Hmm. Interesting idea to ask a guitarist about religion when his signature amp is called Satan. <coughs> what was a game changer for you in your playing, recording and opportunities that came because of what you do? In my playing, there is not been any game changer because it's uh, my playing has been about the same for the past 20 years but opportunities that came because of what you do i would name the biggest opportunity that i got from doing my youtube thing was when uh, six feet under and the haunted asked me to join their bands basically because they watched my videos i mean how cool is that to be able to say yeah i joined six feet under and i joined the haunted because of my stupid videos that's insane. I love that. So yeah, those two opportunities has definitely like put me more into the, uh, you know, the touring aspects of life, you know, and being out on tour and being in a real band. So yeah, I'm very thankful for those opportunities and uh, I'm still in one of those opportunities, The Haunted. So yeah. Hey Ola, I've noticed that in your solos, you like to modulate a lot before returning to the original key. Is this in is this an intentional writing strategy or does it just happen naturally? Cheers from Arkansas. You know, about 80% of the time when I'm doing or writing a solo, I do not think of any key or anything like that. I just play all over the fretboard and uh, if I find something weird but sounds cool, I just stick with that. So I'm not thinking off key, on key, you know. And uh, I think that's good because it keeps the solos interesting and, you know, some of those smaller details that is really like off can really make you... Huh? What was that? Holy shit. What was that thing he did on the guitar there? It was not in key and it was weird. It's kind of awesome. So I like doing that. It, you know, makes the guitar solo a bit more interesting and you know, doing those type of notes is a little bit unexpected and uh, that's what I like. Did you ever imagine that you could make a living making YouTube videos? No, I would never imagine that. And, uh, and I still do not make a living only on YouTube videos. The money I make from YouTube is definitely not enough to uh, support my family. That's why I'm doing so much other things. You know, I'm touring with The Haunted. I'm, right now I'm also having solar guitars. You know, it's all everything together. I can support my lifestyle and I can support my family and pay off this apartment and, you know, stuff like that. But strictly doing YouTube videos, I'm not big enough. But I'm very happy that I'm able to make money out of YouTube, which is insanely awesome because I love doing this. And uh, if I can make a little bit of money out of it so I can continue to do this, then I'm happy and you should be happy too. What do you really think about your career nowadays? Like touring with your band and doing your YouTube stuff. Do you think it's worth it? Definitely. I mean, where I am right now, I'm not, I'm not rich. <laughs> in regards of money but you know almost everything I do is just plain fun and that for me is just way more worth it to be able to have a great and fun life do exactly what I want to do so I feel free in that sense I do not make you know millions of dollars or you know I, I don't live in a fancy house I don't drive a fancy car I can at least have a sustainable lifestyle and I get to do whatever I want, which is insane. You know, having this freedom is worth everything, in my opinion. <sighs> yeah, I'm very happy. Hello, Ola. do you have any plans for non-pointy guitars? You know, I'm a big fan of pointy guitars, so uh, nah, 
I don't think so. I mean, what's the point? Hi Ola, what is your main attitude towards life? Oh, there's a lot of like life questions and career questions right now. Eh? I like it. So my main attitude towards life is, uh, you know, when you become older, you kind of like take a step back and you just watch life as it goes by. And uh, I'm just trying to enjoy my time while being here because I mean, uh, in the end of the day, we're all going to die. Having that in the back of your head that nothing that you're doing is going to matter in the end because we're all going to die at some point. It's kind of like, it's very sad, but it's also a bit relieving, you know? <laughs> so I can take off a bit of that pressure from my shoulders and, you know, just, you know, take the day as they go. And uh, yeah, go see an otolaryngologist. <laughs> Go see an otolaryngologist. Ooh. You could be dying by gases floating on your throat. I don't think so. Hey Ola, this is a very good question. Do you think wood affects tone enough to not be able to, let's say, compensate for the tone difference by dialing your amp settings? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Maybe I should go see a otolaryngologist. The tone wood question is definitely a very loaded question. And uh, in my experience, you know, I think that I've felt like an audible difference between guitars with different type of woods. But then again, you know, I can play a guitar that's exactly the same as another guitar, have the same type of woods and same, you know, even built the same way and they can sound different because, you know, it's just how the guitar is being built. The <laughs> okay, I have to stop. This is getting dangerous, guys. Even the smallest, smallest details matters when you build a guitar. So even having the same guitar, but two different ones, they can differ a lot just by the fact that there might be like a, you know, a fraction of a millimeter offset somewhere or, you know, it, the pickup and stuff like that. I think that matters more than tone wood in that sense. However, the feel of how you play a guitar, when, when you play it, I can definitely kind of sense like if it's a harder type of wood or a softer type of wood, but it's not necessarily something I can hear in the sound, but it's uh, yeah, it's more of a feel thing for me, I think. Uh, what was the question? Do I think if wood affects tone enough to be able to, let's say, compensate for the tone difference by dialing your amp settings? No, nah, I don't think so. So there you have it. Did I answer the question? Probably not. Hola. Here Damien from Argentina. Thanks for all the info in your videos. So when you're recording, do you use often cut and paste for riff or do you play the song all the way? Maybe the way you play the riff can be different in different takes. This is a good question. Uh, it depends on the situation. If I'm writing a song, and, you know, I'm trying arrangements and stuff like that. I can copy riffs all over the place just to, you know, to work quicker, basically. And then, <coughs> now with that said, when I'm recording that song later for an album or for, you know, for the release of the song, I do record every part, you know, over and over. So I do not copy in that sense. Uh, just because it makes it feel a little bit more live rather than just uh, copying the track. So it, it depends on the situation. If I'm writing a song, yeah, I definitely copy paste. Wait, if it feel for the then? Oh, come on. Hi Ola, I've been your subscriber for a long time and I've always wanted to know why you haven't talked in the early videos. Have you been trying to avoid this or this was your thing? Even in your early demos, how to record metal guitar or metal bass, you use some kind of software to talk instead of you. I always wanted to know why you were silent in the early videos because I remember how amazed I was when you began speaking on camera. Keep up the good work. We're always waiting for new videos and we really appreciate the work that you are doing for your fans. Good luck. Well, I, I think I have the most excellent fans and followers. Thank you so much. You're awesome. 
And uh, yeah, back in the day, yeah, in my earlier videos, I always assumed that the viewers didn't want me to speak or talk. They just wanted to hear the amplifier. At least in my sense, I was like, okay, I want to hear an amplifier. I would search for a dual rectifier and I would just want to hear the sound and nothing else. And uh, that's what I assumed that people would want. But yeah, you know, back in the day, I was not the talkative guy. And, uh, you know, I, I was a bit afraid of talking in front of people. And uh, it's just something that I've learned to kind of control and uh, videos that, uh, you know, I'm not really, um, you know, I'm not in a good spot. It feels awkward and it's just awful, basically. But, you know, with time, I got used to this situation. You're sitting talking to you like this and it's uh, definitely way more natural. And uh, I think that since I started talking, you know, the engagement with the viewer has uh, really, you know, gone to the next level. So it's not like I'm going to stop anytime soon, if that's okay. So, all right. Oh, awesome. Howdy, Ola. How do you prefer to portray yourself on stage as a more serious male guy or with a bit of sense of humor? I recently come under fire, stupidly in my opinion, for my onstage antics and was wondering how you prefer to act on stage. Well, you know, I try to be myself on stage. And, uh, you know, when you're on stage, you have a good gig, you feel empowered, you know, you feel like... I'm on top of the world right now, which is a, uh, you should, yeah, you should definitely take in that feeling. And you know, it's, uh, try to look cool. I know I'm not looking cool because I have stupid faces. This is what I look like. This is what I have to work with. <laughs> if you go out to a show, for instance, you're going to see me enjoying myself and, you know, having a good time. I'm happy being up there on stage. I'm happy to see you guys out there, uh, being happy to, that I'm playing for you guys. So. I wanna, I wanna, you know, I wanna, uh, I wanna, uh, you know, I just wanna let you know that, you know, the people that follow me, I'm the same type of guy uh, wherever I, I go. So, yeah. Uh, what? How do blind people know when to stop wiping? Oh, shit. <laughs> Ola, if you ate anybody's poo, whose would it be? I would... Okay. Let's stop with the poo question for a bit, okay? Why the name Solar? Why not Sun? Or Eclipse? Or Anus? <laughs> Good point. Anus guitars. Hola, Ola Nair. By the power of Grayskull, when you are on tour, do you just take your Axe 8 and run it through the front of the house? Or do you still need to take an amp head? Asking for a friend who also has a fish up his ass. So when I bring my Axe 8, I basically ask for just a, you know, backline amplifier to wherever I go. So I'd still use an amplifier. I use an effects loop of an amplifier to hook up my Axe 8. So I've never gone directly from uh, the Axe 8 to front of house. Uh, but I still have the option if it's like, if it's the worst case scenario, there's no real good amp there. Or, uh, you know, it's a situation where the stage is really small. I can still go front of house directly from the Axe 8, but I still prefer using a real amp, okay? You need some new riffs, bro. It's like the same thing over and over. What? Yeah. I, uh, no. I don't, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, think of it like this. I'm providing content to you like at least three or four times every week where I have to play 10 or 15 minutes through a rig. And it's, uh, you know, after one year, you're definitely going to hear a lot of the same things. And uh, obviously right now I'm in some kind of, you know, riff mind that you will hear a lot of, you know, uh, riffs that are about the same. That's just how it is. You, you can just unsubscribe. Huh? Hmm. Hello, dear Ola. My boyfriend and I watch your videos together and we think you're 10 out of 10. I was initially resistant because I don't play guitar, but not, I now find your voice soothing and your kids are so cute. I agree. I was wondering if you received presents from fans, groupies, and what the weirdest gift was. I've received a bunch of gifts. I actually have a couple over here, so... Let me see. Ah, oh, that's that fucking burp again. Ooh, this is a weird one. I received this in Chile. And uh, I guess this is sort of like uh, their uh, religious figure there in Chile, and they, they worship this kind of uh, guy over there. So what happens is that you do this. I should probably censor this. Yeah, 
Uh, I would say this is kind of like a weird gift. I mean, that dick is uh, pretty big for the size. Yeah. So yeah, fans bring me gifts all the time. It's usually booze or liquor. And uh, yeah, but sometimes I get some weird shit, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Ooh, that's right. I need to decide which question was the best. Oh, what was it? Ah, oh, I, I forgot. Let's, uh, okay. I've decided. Let's give the t-shirt to this uh, guy. Uh, I cannot, I, I have no idea how to write his name. But uh, yeah, that was a good question. And uh, the English was really good too. So I, I'm not sure where you're from, but you should contact me. I'll send you that He-Man t-shirt, okay? Where is it? All right, so you can contact me, Mr. National Crack Crack, and I'll send this to you wherever you live, okay? Congratulations, okay? Thank you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, please, if you liked it, subscribe to my channel because that's how I grow, you know. Okay, thank you, bye.